all right everybody welcome back to the channel welcome to another video uh today i'm going to be bringing you guys the uh install of the clutch on old big heavy here so uh ever since it's been tuned here what a month ago or whatever uh, i've just really been driving it kind of easy what little bit i have been driving it and uh the clutch it's just it's smoked so it's uh it's time for another one uh, i've got a brand new south bend dual disc coming should be here tomorrow and i figured i'd go ahead and just take advantage of today's beautiful weather and get out here and get the transmission drop get the fluid out of it i've got some brand new synchro mesh that's going to be going in it uh as well as the clutch so i figured hey it's you know it's sunday it's a beautiful day let's go ahead and get after it uh rather than rather than waiting tomorrow when the clutch is here so uh that way i like as soon as the clutch shows up i can go ahead and install the clutch and get the transmission back in on the same day so uh pretty straightforward i'm not really gonna show you guys every aspect of it i'll try to get the camera set up underneath there when i'm coming down with it if you guys have ever messed with it this is a nv 5600 six speed manual six speed and they are heavy so i'm gonna have to take my time try to position my um my floor jack with some straps and just do my best i mean i'm a one-man team so it's uh it's gonna i'm gonna have to go nice and slow i'll try to get some of that stuff on camera for you guys and uh that's it so i figured i guys bring you, bring you along for the ride on that to kind of take a break from the uh the build here um i'll be filling you guys in on another video it's kind of a long story i ended up having to buy some more third certs all 10 of these are good to go the one i repaired tightened up 75 foot pounds good to go which arp suggests 80 so i'm gonna go with a little different tactic um and I'll, I'll be bringing this to you guys on another video but all 10 of these smaller eight millimeter studs stripped so i i mean i'm just i'm not catching a break on this aluminum block so what i'm done what i what i have done and what the process is going to be i will be thread inserting every single head bolt all 30 between both heads uh, this one's obviously already done same thing on this side right here inside the head Those are the two that I originally had stripped so those don't have to be completed, but the heads will be coming off one more time um, And I will be I bought actually time cert inserts for these top small tens so I'll be doing those as well as the continuation of the other nine on each head So I'm tired of these things pulling and stripping out. You know, you don't know until you get the head on, get everything clean, you get all the studs dried out with brake clean, you put the, the molly lube on, you know, and then you get all the way down and boom, you strip one and then you're you're stuck with your uh, your foot in your mouth. So um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play no more games. I'm gonna pull the heads off one more time, thread cert all 30 head bolts, and call it a day. And what I'm gonna do is I've got some instruction from a buddy of mine when he was doing his lsa block um apparently you know arp calls for the instructions to run these studs all the way down hand tight right um you're not you're not made to torque them down with the allen yeah you can use the allen to run them down but once they stop that's the, you know that's where they should be so that's what i was doing i'd run them down to where they stop and i'd give them like a i mean a 16th of a turn just to kind of seat them in place not even putting any kind of turn on them at all. And that was it. And I was doing all of them that way. So what they were telling me is that I should run all the way down and then back it off a quarter or a half turn to where the threads are like technically not bottomed out in the hole. So uh, again, I'll be bringing a video for you guys. I'm going to set the camera up on this and show you guys the process of actually using the time cert on the head studs, uh, excuse me, head hole, head bolt holes and um and going forth with that route so um you know the only other option other than that is if it had any kind of future problems which it won't because i mean if you guys know these time cert inserts are even better than the factory hole that's just tapped from gm right like it's already been proven that once you insert these time cert thread certs um that type of repair is actually a stronger uh holding clamping force than the traditional bowl hole so shouldn't have any problems i'll put it back together hopefully that'll be the last time these heads go on at least till it's run and then it sees 30 40 pounds of boost and then it blows the head gasket and then i'll be pulling the heads back off but that's for another day so uh today's focus is going to be on old big heavy here and get the clutch pulled out and get the transmission out and get the clutch pulled off 
and uh, get it prepared for tomorrow. So I'll bring you guys along for the ride and that's it. The process in which getting this started for me personally is I'm gonna drain the fluid. Like I said, since the, the fluid's already gonna be uh, changed in this whole entire clutch process, but for the purposes of the transmission being slightly lighter without the fluid and the fluid needs to be pulled out anyway, uh, I figured I would start this process off with that first. So um, this is the PTO cover that you're looking at. I think you guys have a good view of it there. And basically how you drain the NV5600 is that you take a 9 16th socket and you pull off this bottom bolt. Uh, once this bottom bolt is out, your fluid will be draining. I will actually be pulling this entire cover off because behind it uh, is a couple magnets and I will be cleaning those off and resealing this cover. Uh, this is the fill and so that's what the process is going to be here. So let's get this broke free, get the drain pan in place and luckily uh, working on these trucks, really just trucks in general, especially half ton and bigger, they're, they're big enough and high enough to where I don't have to put this thing up on stands or anything. I just make sure the wheels are chalked nice, got the emergency brake set, and then I put cardboard down or, you know, if you have a creeper or whatever, you just slide right underneath it and get started. It's kind of nice. Um, you know, I'm always skeptical when it comes to getting under vehicles now from a prior accident that I had with one falling on me. And I am lucky to be alive today because of that. But uh, that's not a story for today. And let's see what this thing looks like. Oh, it actually looks like it's in decent shape, folks. I was expecting this fluid to be a little bit darker. So these NV5600s, <clears throat> excuse me, they take a special type of fluid which it's synchro mesh. <clears throat> it's almost uh, like ATF. It's kind of a mixture between gear oil and ATF. And that's what they run. So I have bought um, about seven quarts of it. I have bought a little extra. And I think the spec calls for something around five quarts. Uh, don't quote me on that. Read your manual. Uh, look up the specs online out of, a, out of an actual Dodge book. I'm not telling you what to put in your transmission. Um, I will be putting six quarts in this one. So uh, I'm going to be draining this out. And what, what people do is you can fill it from the, uh, the fill hill hole here. And then once it comes out, it's full. <clears throat> My driveway is actually very slightly a downhill slope. Like, I mean, it's probably like a 5% a slope. It's very minute. But uh, it, it will play a, a role in some levels on, on, on my driveway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off this top bolt and I'll actually be filling it from here. I'll put all six quarts in from higher. Or what you can do also is you can take and put in the fluid from the shifter. You just remove the shifter from inside the truck. And once the sh shifter is out of place, uh, you have the big giant opening. So, All right. So the next step to the process is going to be to get the drive shaft pulled out. All right, so I'll be getting these four 15 millimeters pulled out back here on the rear end. And then going forward, we'll be getting the carrier bearing assembly unbolted from its position here with these two 15 millimeter bolts. Uh, I've got it supported here with the jack stand just so it doesn't fall on my face. And then once I get it, off on the rear end and it's off up there i'll go ahead and uh slowly transition it out from the back of the transmission up there so uh i am going to reposition the um the drain pan below that just in case a little bit of fluid comes out which it shouldn't but i'm going to do it just as a precaution and uh then the drive shaft will be out i'll lay it down and off to the side and get it out of the way and then we'll be moving forward to the bell housing bolts all right, so I've already got a couple of these out, but I'd show you guys the process here. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward, but all right, bust 
bust it loose with the half inch drive here and then get yourself one of these three inch drive ratchets i mean this one's from snap on uh but this is probably one of my favorite tools in my toolbox um well worth the money uh if you buy one you definitely won't be disappointed so got same 15 millimeter set up on it and then out comes the bolt so the only one that i have left there is the one on the top which is about the one that's going to be the most fun to get away and i'll get that one out and get back with you guys now we're going to be moving on to these two for the carrier bearing <clears throat> and i've already got these broke loose so you guys will just see the easy part of me pulling them out so the weight of the drive shaft is going to start coming down on you which is why i've got that jack in there because these things are rather heavy especially for one person trying to take it out and hold it all at the same time so get it there get it on your jack stand or hopefully you're privileged enough to where you've got a shop and a lift and you don't have to worry about this so then everything's loose and you pretty much just drop this back portion out by sliding this <clears throat> for just a hair where you can get it separated off of the uh differential back here so there you have it it's off the rear end the carrier bearing is unhooked and basically the support of the dry shaft is coming from that jack stand so or drain pan is in place underneath the transmission what we're going to do here is try to just straight muscle this thing down i'll pick up off the jack stand a little bit slide the jack stand out of the way come down with it slowly as i'm trying to wiggle it out of the transmission and i'll just rotate it and set it on the ground hopefully so let's do that <laughs> The bigger, the stronger you are here, or the more people you have. The easier this process would be for you. folks the crappy dodge two-piece drive shaft and the output of the transmission so if you guys are familiar with these this introduces a problem down the road where if this bearing goes out you can cause yourself to have some pretty major vibrations inside the cab so what a lot of people do especially in the performance world uh they get rid of these two-piece drive shafts and they put in a solid one piece you know steel or aluminum whatever your choice is based off of your application and uh that's that so if i had you know an extra thousand dollars laying around or it just fell out of the sky i would definitely put one in this truck especially with it being a long bed dually that's the last thing i want breaking on me one day when i'm trying to out rip on it or really not even rip on it but just tow in or you know that's the last thing i want to break so that's that guys i'll get the dry shaft out of my way and then uh we'll be moving forward to the slave you see it sitting up there bolted to the bell housing I'll be getting that and the hydraulic line and all that pulled out of the way once that's done then the last thing will be uh, the cross member here in front of me and the bell housing bolts. So I'll get that uh, slave out of the way and I will get my jack put in place with some straps. Go ahead and get the 
cross member out of the way. And once the cross member's out of the way, the last thing will be the bell housing bolts. And then out she will come. So shifter is out from up top. And then we got the jack situated. All the bell housing bolts are out from the adapter. <laughs> and right now, the jack has the majority of it. So at this point, I just really need to make sure that I pay attention to everything. Because if not, this thing's gonna end up on the ground. All right, folks, and there you have it. She is out and on the ground. It's pretty heavy. So I'm gonna have to try to maneuver it at least back in the truck. I might not even try to take it from out underneath the truck. I don't really need it to be out and under the truck. I just really need to be able to excise excess inside the uh, bell housing there. Got the clutch in the mail today and I am moving along with getting it installed. I figured I'd show you guys the process here of on your back in the driveway stuff. Pretty sweet. So I've got the new flywheel put in place. It's torqued with a uh, thread locker on the bolts. And the first disc there is in place with the alignment tool. Um, I'm about to come in with the, the intermediate plate. I got all this pretty much as clean as I'm gonna get it. And then I've got the, the uh, input shaft here pretty much lubed up, cleaned off. And the pivot ball over there as well. So pretty much uh, coming in with this uh, intermediate plate and then going on with the second disc and then the pressure plate. We'll get this thing lined up here for you guys. And there's no orientation for this. Um, it's just simple uh, installing. However, they do have a little paint um, put in right here on the flywheel. So I am gonna, however, match that back up for any type of reason that they had this put in. But pretty much just get those certain spots right there lined up. Try not to touch it. I just wipe, wiped it down with brake clean. And that's it, right? So you can see that disc, that inner disc can still move. And then once we get everything in here, we'll get them all lined up. We'll tighten down the pressure plate, at least snug, and then we can pull the alignment tool out and torque the rest of the pressure plate. All right, here we're coming in with the second disc. And what we have to do here is make sure that uh, it's orientated correctly, just like the first disc. You can see here they've got it marked pressure plate side because the material is different on the intermediate plate side. So you want to have the pressure plate on the correct surface. All right, so what we're going to do at this point is I'm just going to prep the pressure plate and get my hardware and come back under the truck and line it up and get the pressure plate put on all right so coming in with the pressure plate and so this is usually kind of fun because these are rather heavy in the nv5600 get this pressure plate <clears throat> feels heavier than the flywheel so it's kind of crazy. So what we're gonna do is just kind of get it there in place. These do not require <clears throat> Loctite. And again, you know, if you've got a lift or whatever, this is usually a lot, a lot easier than laying on your back and doing it. Another thing that usually helps with this is if you have studs that you can put in place that are the same thread and pitch of your bolts, then you can 
to do so and you just run them into the flywheel and then you can kind of just keep your pressure plate in place without it almost killing you and falling on your face. I'm gonna get the rest of these in place here so this doesn't fall off and hurt me. Now this uses different hardware <clears throat> than uh, the factory clutch that I pulled out of it. It didn't use Allen's, it used traditional hex bolts. So, I like that it really matters, but however, I suggest using your hardware that comes with the, your clutch assembly. The flywheel bolts were different. Uh, I noticed when I matched them up, with the original ones that I took out, they were <clears throat> slightly shorter. And so, again, I suggest using the hardware that comes with it. Okay, so we're gonna get the pivot fork put in place. <clears throat> and so, what you're gonna do, you're gonna get it lined up. You're gonna have a throttle bearing already on the fork. Make sure you got it oriented correctly. If you have a uh, OEM fork, it goes the uh, part number is down here where my finger's sliding. So that way, like, cause these actually can be installed backwards. And then this side is for the slave cylinder. So I'm gonna get it put on, get it started there, get it seated on the fork, on the pivot. And then you have your little your lock so uh, this is a little painstaking um, I'm definitely gonna be all in your guys's way but basically you're gonna have to just slide back and when you slide this back this is gonna clip on the bottom side of the of the uh, the ball and then this will be on the top side around the fork all right folks so basically I'm on the first test drive And so far, so good. So definitely, uh, what I've noticed is the engagement is, uh, it engages a little sooner, so only a minimum uh, let out, letting out on the pedal will allow the truck to move. But overall, the shifting's a little smoother. Um, the pedal is definitely a little lighter, you know, like if uh, my, my leg, leg pressure to get the pedal pushed is definitely a little lighter and it's uh, it's nice. So all over uh, overall, uh, a success to the clutch swap and definitely I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, South Bend recommends a break in period of about three to 400 miles of like you know, light and easy, just normal stoplight, uh, stop and go traffic. So basically what I'm gonna do is just take it easy on the truck before I try to rip in it and um, just try to break the clutch in the best I can. Really, that's that guys. I just wanna touch base back with you guys to let you guys know that's what the process was and um, it's pretty straightforward. So if you guys are on the fence with Southman's dual clutch, with the NV5600, don't be. It's a good, good clutch so far. Uh, I've seen nothing but great reviews out of them, the guys that are already been running them. Uh, it's definitely my turn to go back now and get cleaned up, and uh, that's it. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe and the like button for uh, the channel, and we'll see you next time.